Hi guys, this is Trina from John's Furniture Repair in the shop with another new project. So what we've got today is a uh, antique Victrola radio cabinet and it's in pretty rough shape and we're doing a complete restoration and uh, making it into a little bit more of a storage uh, cabinet instead of a Victrola because it doesn't have the radio anymore. Um, someone has at some point done a little bit of uh, carpentry to make it useful for them. Uh, the story was that uh, this customer's father used it as a tool bin in his garage. So he uh, did a few things to make it useful for him. And now she wants it to be uh, kind of put back to the way it was, but with shelving instead of the Victrola unit. So let me show you uh, what we're going to be doing. So both of these tops here, um, are are removed on the original pieces this top is supposed to be affixed and only this one comes up for the victrola so this top was removed at some point um, and you can see inside here that there's just all the blocking and everything that was removed on the interior and kind of ripped apart and there's uh, you know, shreds of wood and stuff left in there. So what we're gonna be doing is removing the hinges back here that they've put on and re-affixing uh, this top so that it does not go uh, up and down or remove or open or anything like that. It'll just be back the way it was. So that will be glued and screwed down. This top on this side here though, we will be putting back on the piano hinge so it still has the old piano hinge back there that it's gonna um, be reattached to and then we're gonna add a stay so that when she lifts the lid up it'll stay where she needs it to get whatever she's getting out of here and then uh, even have it open if she wants to for a while and then put it back down so it'll still have that interesting kind of Victrola. Well, it's not a Victrola, it's a McLaughlin uh, from Heinzman, but uh, they'll still have that kind of operation like they used to. So other than that, uh, both of these doors here are in pretty bad condition. Um, one of these doors would have never opened in the first place, but he's made, uh, made it so that they both do come off so this one folds down uh, and they would have had the record storage unit in here you can see on the side all of the marks from the old shelves for the record storage unit so this one um, works fine but it doesn't uh, actually hit where it's supposed to it's dropped so I've got to look at what happened there I think the hinges have worn out on the sides and everything's kind of dropped. You can kind of see there's a lot of movement there. So that'll need to be repaired. And then this is the same thing. It's kind of um, dropped down. You can push it out from the inside here. Nope. So anyways, we're gonna make this so that it also opens. Um, it's just jammed in there right now, I think. There's something holding on to it. So we'll get into that when we do. And then the base here uh, has completely broken off. I think that's part of the problem with the, the door being dropped and everything. So that needs to be repaired and rebuilt. Um, other than that, we've got all four legs missing uh, their cheeks. So I'll show you here. We've got uh, the cheeks of the legs missing. So we'll need to add uh, wood onto those and re-carve the little button foot that uh, you can see over here on that side. So uh, those are the major things that we've got going on. Um, there's other things that are pretty serious like the veneer repair that needs to happen everywhere. And we'll have to be uh, splicing in some new veneers on the tops and some of the sides, the drawers and doors, they all have issues that way. 
And uh, we're gonna be leaving this little hole with the accession here, um, just as a throwback to what it was. And we're gonna be filling this hole here. So uh, that's the other thing. And then we're gonna be adding some shelves, just uh, two shelves on the interior of this thing. So other than that, a complete refinish into uh, a little bit more of a darker, um, kind of a little bit more like it was on the interior there. Uh, kind of like a dark mahogany color. Okay, so I got the uh, chest on the side here. And these uh, hinges that um, these doors open and close with are underneath this whole mechanism here which I've never seen before. So I'm gonna remove these brackets, which I think they slip into the frame here as just a little slot. Yeah, so those are just keeping those all together. And I think this is uh, one of the areas that this piece is having issues with because that whole frame has dropped. Swing those out and that should just pop out with the hinges. Yeah, so they've got a whole board here that hold the hinges in place. And then these brackets just slip into grooves. These guys that just swivel and slip into grooves mm -hmm. in this groove right here in the frame that hold it there. blocks uh, out of alder and one block's gonna uh, the front block is gonna have all the the grain going that way and then uh, this block will go this way so that I don't have any end grain showing so I'll just glue up this one So that'll sit overnight. I'll do the other three legs and then I can uh, start carving the leg again. So the legs are all in clamps. While that is drying overnight, I uh, put in this board back here. The Victrola had a gap back here. I think, I'm not sure why, maybe for flow of music or whatever, but um, we don't need that anymore for the shelves. So I've just got that held in with wedges and glued to this shelf piece, but not the back panel. So that's gonna dry. In the meantime, while well, that's all there, I've got the front piece off here and you can see it's all broken out on one side and uh, broken in more places than not. So some pieces missing here. I have one piece that I'll put back in, but uh, I think the rest of it's there mostly. And then we got our little medallion here that's missing a piece that we'll have to fill in. But what I'm gonna do for this repair is uh, cut this off so that it's a flat surface. And I'm just gonna, I made this block out of pine. I'm just gonna add this on the back here and uh, once that's dry, you can re-drill the, the dowel and then we can reinstall that piece. So I'll get to cutting it. I figured out why the drawers had dropped. These pieces, I looked at a little bit more closely and where the hinge mount inside, they're all broken here. So I need to repair these before I put uh, the hinges back in. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, 
get some epoxy. This side's not that bad for that type of thing, but this side here, you can see it's all just broken out. I think I'm gonna get some epoxy into these holes and just squish them right shut with a really good clamp and re-drill and uh, keep that down that way. So I might use slightly longer screws as well so I can get more into uh, the meat of this board just because, you know, being just right here and everything weighing on it, uh, that's where it's gonna rip out again. So maybe if I can get down uh, a good two and a half inches maybe uh, into that board, then maybe that'll help keep everything together as well. So I'll get uh, these all glued up and see where we're at. All right, this next morning with uh, everything, I've just gotten these guys out of clamps. So they're all glued and ready for carving here and i also did some work on the bottom of the veneer while it was upside down so those can come out of clamps now too and uh, we can get to patching the veneer side we've got the little hole patched down there so that can get carved out too and uh we got the front of this guy glued back together here because there was a big crack the other things that we did uh, we did some gluing on these pieces, um, all of these uh, hinge mounts were uh, broken here, the, the veneer was lifted, and then uh, on this side, these were all cracked up. So the veneer uh, was lifted on here, and then this was and glued, and then this was cracked here, and we got that all back on both sides. And same thing on this one, um, big cracks that ran down here where the hinge had lifted it and cracked it off on both sides. So that would have been a major reason also why these doors were dropped down from the frame. So the other thing we did yesterday was get this guy all together. I just did a veneer line over the butt joint here just for extra protection. And nobody's gonna see that, it's gonna be in the back of the cabinet. And uh, Got these little pieces glued back on. So those are all good. This is ready for uh, some stripping. And a little emblem here that goes on. I've added some epoxy putty too because it was broken. And so that needs to get sanded before I put it back on there and, and shaped. It's actually not that nice of a piece of wood. I thought it would be nicer when I stripped it, but nonetheless, we'll put it back where it goes. So, uh, also these two guys that hold the hinges on the bottom, we got all these glued in. And so these are all sturdy now for the hinges to uh, be re-drilled back in there and they won't drop anymore. So both of those were repaired as well. And uh, yeah, so I'm on to carving legs and repairing veneer on these guys. Uh, these are the two lids. So there's some pretty serious veneer damage. Uh, underlayment is loose and missing in, in places. So first I have to glue down the underlayment and then add pieces that are missing on the underlayment. And then I can glue um, the, the uh, top layer of veneer and add in some uh, missing pieces. So that'll be a process. And uh, the little areas that I'm finding where there's veneer missing, like on the edge here, there was just little chips. I'm just gonna use epoxy putty because uh, it doesn't merit uh, putting a new piece in there. Same thing over here, just little pieces that were missing and it wasn't loose around it. Um, but this area here is loose, so I'll glue that. So kind of a double uh, method just to you know small pieces will get the the putty and bigger pieces like this will get patches so that you've got walnut where you can see it all right so i'm gonna get these clamps off of these guys first and uh start carving off some major meat on these legs and start getting a shape going okay so figuring out a shape for these legs uh, i kind of have to make it up myself because there's no leg here all of them are missing these chunks and uh, it's not a circle, it's an oval. And then there's this bun here that ends and then the front of the foot kind of uh, comes over that. So what I'm gonna have to do is kind of eyeball, you know, where 
the bottom of this piece is gonna come. Mark off a line how thick that is. And then on the second area here, um, it's gonna have to be larger than this base. So it's gonna be kind of tough. It's gonna to be kind of like a two, uh, two method procedure here. So what I'm first gonna do is just kind of eyeball where this bun foot looks like it's supposed to come to naturally. And because it's an oval, I can't really use a, a, a tool. So that kind of looks like where it would come to there. And then I have to um, kind of look at where this piece ends here, how wide this is. So it looks like it's about mm, five eighths thick. So if I come down here, I can make a line at five eighths. This one's sticking up a little bit, so I'll have to go a little bit farther down. So I'll just draw this line across. So that will be my line. <laughs> watching to see how far my blade is going in. I want it to come to about right here. Stop a little short just so I can get a better eyeball. Then I'll come along this way. Okay, so that has essentially split this carving into two sections. So now I can break down this top section to start forming this bun. So I'm gonna take off quite a heavy chunk. then start getting a little bit smaller pieces. To bring it, it's obviously gonna need to be starting to be curved in. So what I'm gonna do is bring my uh, chisel at an angle and start carving it in. Right next to the bun foot there. And I'm gonna try to stay at the same distance all the way around and just make that first cut. Okay, so now that I've carved out the general shape, I'm gonna take my uh, Japanese um, files and I'm just going to start working down some of the high spots. And getting that rounded shape. and just smooth everything out. Okay, so that's that half of the, the carving. So before I flip every one of these to do the rest of the carving. I'm gonna be adding on, because to do the, the uh, other carving, 
I'm going to mostly do the work from the top. So I'm going to add my foot before that. Right there. Because when I turn this over, I don't want my feet dragging all over the shop. It's kind of one of the first things I do when I have something in here. So um, now that this piece is finished, I can start marking out for this piece. So it's going to be kind of like a, uh, a Queen Anne leg that comes to a point, like a teardrop. So I'm going to kind of have the shape a little bit proud of this bun. And then it's going to come to a point in the center, which might be around here somewhere. like that and this will kind of curve up from the bottom and then curve down from the top so what I'm gonna do first is uh, get rid of the meat on this leg I'm gonna make sure I come a little bit more proud than this I don't want to go too close I'm gonna go more like that Same thing here. I'm gonna go a little bit more proud. I can always make it smaller. Kind of hard to make it. Go just bring it all the way to that point there. So that'll be kind of the shape. It's a little bit too big. I kind of want the end to stop right here. So I'll just kind of keep working along my line here to bring it into where I want from the bottom. Okay. So I'm just going to always be aware that I have this point, this point, this point and this point all lined up. We're a little bit off that side, so I'll just bring it back over here. Good. So I'll sand the bottom here while it's upside down. Soften that edge. got a nice point in our oval here and uh, I'll do this to all four legs before we turn it over. piece here all uh, sanded and repaired there's our repair on the back now I cannot get this cabinet apart a lot and so for that reason I'm gonna only be doing a dowel joint on one side and then I'm gonna be doing a pocket screw on the other side to get this back into where it's gonna go uh, it's the only way possible without ripping this whole thing apart which 
I do not want to do. So I'm going to just put the dowel in first. And then I'm going to let this come back together. And I'm going to find where this screw is supposed to go. So this lines up and then I'll know exactly where this needs to be. Center, so I'll screw this down. And then I can put in my pocket screw on this side. Looks like it's in the same spot on both sides. So we've got that piece back on. Uh, the other thing that I gotta do to this piece, I've sanded and fixed the little emblem here. Got a little bit of epoxy putty just on the edge. So I'm gonna nail this guy back in place. Clamp on it. that little nail. Good, so let that sit. And then these guys get glued on here. They were nailed as well. Um, but because the Whole cabinet has shifted the nail holes are in a different spot so i'm going to glue them first and then brad them on when the, when the glue is dry okay so i've got all four legs carved on the bottom and the gliders in and i've got some veneer splices in there looks pretty rough we'll have to do some color there I've got the front brace on and I've added some quarter blocks to the back of it just to give it extra strength. And there's our repaired side. Uh, this side I just had one major veneer repair there. So we're ready to flip this thing over on its feet and uh, start addressing stuff from that side. Okay guys, so I've got the uh, cabinet flipped over here on a cart and I'm just working on the shape of the top of these legs so I'm giving it kind of a, an overhang and kind of a scoop out this way I was kind of fiddling with the shape here trying to get it to look right each leg will be a little bit different just because this is a hand carved job so I've got two more left to go here on this side and uh, I'll show you guys how we get that shape Okay, so the first thing I do is just make some marks um, to reference for my coping saw. And uh, I just kind of make them from the side here to this point to make sure that I'm following a line. It's not super easy to cut a curve like this up, so I'm going a little bit heavier on uh, and leaving some, some uh, wood to be kind of shaved off later. So what I know is that I want my point to be the same on each one which is about a quarter inch so i'm marking that first here that's how wide i want my point to be and then i'm just bringing my line just eyeballing it to that point there just as a kind of a rough reference for my saw i'll do the same thing on this side Most of that I'll leave. So I'm gonna take my little coping saw here and I'm gonna try to uh, take it off on that line. Kind of 
watching both sides at the same time. got most of the meat off of it there and the general shape and then uh, I'm gonna take a file and just kind of get the little bits off of the end there and then I'm gonna take a sander a detail sander uh, this guy and I'm gonna scoop out the wood coming down here, because I want a little bit of a curve. So I'm just gonna be really careful and very gentle with how the angle I come. I need to come this way on this one, and this way on this one. Okay, so that's got the uh, general shape down pretty good. And now I can work on uh, detailing with the file. This side looks pretty good. This side looks a little bit fat right here, so I'm just gonna take off some. is a little bit too far out. I'm gonna bring it back like the other one. So I'm just gonna hit that edge a little bit. the general meat taken off, we're gonna use a 120 sandpaper and give it a sand. Good, so you can see how it looks. In generally good shape. Needs another sand with the 180 at the end of it, but that's how I get that shape. It's kind of a classic Heinzman piano leg, actually, uh, if you're familiar with that. Um, but anyways, I've got one left to do, and then these guys are all ready. So. All right, so now that all those legs are done, uh, I'm going to take my attention to the inside of the cabinet. Uh, the Victrolas weren't usually very nice inside just because they weren't meant to be uh, used as cabinets for storage and this would have been covered and a piece of fabric behind it um, with a screen. But we're going to be putting some shelves in here so I'm actually going to be finishing the interior. So you can see it's just pretty rough wood. So I'm going to sand that all down as well as in here. Same kind of thing. These are the old shelves that are missing now. So we'll just need to give everything a good sand so I can uh, make it all even and smooth inside. So I'm just gonna get my Festool sander going with the detail sander so I can get into the corners and see how it looks. They mastering that they found that there's several sites in Canada that still have to be looked at and looked for. Yeah, so how does it feel for you to be 
All right, so I've got all the putty in there drying. Put a dowel in the inside of that big hole that we showed from the outside. And there's a big chip out there as well as that corner. So that's gonna to need to dry for a while. But next I'm going to deal with these guys. So we were uh, going to uh, cover these hinge ones up because this side's gonna to be totally uh, mounted in here permanently. So these blocks are gonna get screwed back into the piece on the top. So I need to make some pieces to fit in here. I'm just gonna use a piece of uh, pine that I've got here. I'm just gonna cut it to fit in there and then glue it down. All right, so I've got those guys repaired. So the last thing or the next thing I've got to put in are these blocks that are not here anymore for the top to get screwed down to. So I just got a, a couple of pine blocks here again, and I'll just glue them and clamp them on. So after these are dry, then I will take my drill and drill out the holes. Just screw the top down too. Okay, so I've got uh, two shelf uh, sticks here. So I'm going to measure up where I want the shelf to sit on. So I'm thinking, let's go about eight and a half and then the shelf will sit on top of that. So I'll make my mark at eight and a half here. Good, super sturdy. So I'll just recheck it to make sure it looks good. Yep, perfect. So that'll be good and sturdy place to put the shelf. I'll do the other side and then we'll get to making shelves. All right, so I've got one shelf in here. I have to do a little notch out for here, just using a half inch ply. And on this side, I've got another one cut to go in. And I'm only using eighth inch ply on this side because it's got pretty beefy um, It's got pretty big hangers here, so I don't have to worry about that. You don't see the front edge of this shelf, so I don't need to use half inch ply and wood is so expensive right now. So the other thing that I noticed um, when I was working on taking these clamps off and looking at everything is that this whole center um, of the cabinet had dropped in the back. And so what I've got here is a clamp that's coming from the bottom, which is hooking up to the shelf on the bottom and pulling everything up here so that it's level. And then I've got a clamp coming from the back to the front to keep it in the joint. So the corner block they had in there right here was super tiny and uh, really not hanging on at all. But I mean, when we do put the top back on this piece, uh, the top is gonna hold everything uh, nice and, and uh, level. So when he did remove this top, he kind of took away some of the structure of this piece. So we're gonna add actually back a pretty big corner block with some fasteners. So I'm just gonna glue this guy in here and screw it both to both sides just to give it an extra hold while we're working on this cabinet. And uh, it won't hurt to have that joint together this way and that way and this way. So there, so got that guy all in there. Now I can take off these clamps. Good, so now I've got this good and level with the surface. This piece just needs to come off here. And you know, both of these surfaces meet together. So I'll need to plane this repair off here where we filled in the hinges and then take off a bit of this extra stuff that was left here. And then this is in pretty good shape. So.
guys, just an update on this piece because we've done a lot to this thing to get it to this stage. So I'm just gonna show you guys all the stuff we've done so far. So starting from the inside, uh, we completely sanded and stripped and cleaned everything in here um, and cleaned up everything for new shelves. And those shelves are uh, in the booth getting some clear coats right now. Got new shelf pins down here and these guys were installed. I've got the holes drilled for the top to go back on. So that's all repaired. Uh, again, we did the repair of the back where there's a big gap here and I've added a piece of trim in here just to finish it off nicely and uh, get that all back to good. On the outside, other than stripping and refinishing, we did a whole repair on this base piece and you can see right there, we've got a repair holding this thing nicely in place as well as corner blocks to give it a little bit extra hold strength. We've carved all of the feet. So those are looking good. Got them all shaped, sanded and ready for stain. This guy, we've got our little pegs in that we glued the, the rubber grommets onto and stripped this and, and sanded it as well. So that fits in there nicely now. Those just pop in and then sits like that. Um, there's pretty serious repairs of veneer on the sides, plus the hole that was here that we filled. And on this side, a little bit less so, but uh, again, lots of repair anyways. Uh, we filled this little hole here with a walnut plug because someone had drilled a hole through here that's no longer needed. And, uh, yeah, so this case, I'm probably forgetting something, but that's where we're at with this case. I've stained the interior, um, and when I'm finished the doors, I'll stain the whole rest of it and probably spray it while it's apart before I put the top on and everything. So now we're back to fixing the tops and the, draw and the door fronts. So this is the top that's gonna get mounted permanently and I've got these filled with epoxy putty where the old hinges were. And we got a little veneer repair here. And the top, we're gonna have to do a pretty serious veneer repair here. Plus the veneer is loose in a couple places. Not too, too bad. Looks worse than it is. And then this top here, we've got a few little repairs on the bottom, most of the veneer on the top needs dealing with on the front edge of that guy. So we're gonna get to that. And then these doors, if you remember, we repaired the uh, big cracks to both hinge mounts. Remember these doors were sitting too low in the cabinet. So there's big cracks on either side here. So those are fixed. A few veneer repairs still needed to happen. Same thing on the other one. And those get mounted to these slider blocks that get mounted underneath the cabinet. So we fixed all of the mounting uh, hinge mounts on these as well. So we've come a long way on this piece and uh, we've got a ways to go, but it's getting there. Um, and we're gonna be using brown mahogany as a stain made by Gowdy. And uh, it's a pretty dark stain. Uh, that's what the customer picked. So it's the color that you see inside here. So a little bit darker than the original. We're keeping this area the original color because we're keeping the Heinzmann logo uh, and, and uh, keeping the as much of the old um, nostalgic of the piece as we can. Okay, so working on the top here on this area that needs repair. You can see there's a little bit of the underlayment missing here where the veneer is supposed to go over. So we need to replace that first before we put new veneers here. So I've got a, a piece of old underlayment that I keep from other jobs that I can pull it off from. And I'm just going to slot it underneath these veneers. Just like that. 
and uh, check the fit and it looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is get glue everywhere and uh, I'm gonna probably cut this off a little bit so it's not sticking out so much. So I'll just trace on behind where I can cut off from. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to get my underlayment piece in here. Like that. And make sure there's enough glue on these tips to hold it where it needs to go. Okay, so when I clamp this, there's not gonna be any pressure on these parts. So what I'm gonna to have to do is just add in some temporary pieces that I'm gonna peel off after. Just so I get a little bit of pressure on that point. So I'll just cut some pieces that can put some pressure on with my clamp. guys so it's the next morning everything's been in clamps overnight and uh, a couple of things I've taken off there's a repair we did both edges so I got a ton of clamps to remove and check out how the glue up went all right guys I've been working away finding more little loose veneers and doing patches this is probably the third time each of them have been in clamps <clears throat> So I'm just going to keep working at those and getting them farther along. They were in such bad shape, so I keep finding more and more loose veneer that I have to deal with. So in the meantime, while those are sitting there in clamps, I'm going to be staining this. So we got our uh, brown mahogany going. Look how beautiful that is on there. So we're going to get the whole thing stained up uh, while we're waiting for the clamps to dry.
All right, guys, so everything is done on the cabinet. This was a big job. It took me way longer than anticipated, but it's turned out beautiful. Let's go over everything we did. So when you remember, uh, when it was brought in, um, the top was completely missing and in pieces and veneer was chipping everywhere. The doors had fallen off, the base, there was all fallen off. All of the legs were missing, their toes. Um, veneer was missing on the sides of the cabinet. Uh, everything was broken. The interior was a mess. So let's take a look at how she looks now. Uh, so I've got the little chain in here and I match the interior to the original Heinzmann uh, color. So this is the original color of the Victrola style cabinet that um, was on it. And this is where the Victrola would have been in here. But because they don't have it, we've installed this shelf so they can store some stuff in here and uh, access it from this lid. And then down here, which is where the old Victrola would have uh, the speaker coming out from, there's just a kind of a cubby that's accessible from taking this panel off. And we've got the whole interior all stained and smooth and ready for storage. Looks like I need to do a little bit of dusting in there. Um, but that's just accessible through this little panel. If you remember this guy, we had to replace the little pegs. So we have our little boots there that sit into the slots. And then this just clips right into place really nicely. So these doors were in terrible shape. If you remember, the hinges were all falling out. So uh, we took everything out of here and uh, have it all sturdy. The underside is all fixed with those tabs that slide back and forth for the doors. Uh, and did repair one hinge that was broken. And this piece of side as well would have just had the uh, shelves for records, but we've just put one shelf in for storage and we've finished all the interior nicely. So it's ready for storage. We had a little bit of a, a stop there with some um, felts so that this door won't go too far in. So you can just see how these doors kind of slide away for storage when you have it open. very nicely come back out I don't think they're gonna to need to do a lot of the sliding most of those pieces are very warped so this piece here we had a big repair on the back I'll show you that from the inside you can see that we did that big piece that we got in there and then we reattached it to the cabinet and put in some corner blocks so that's all looking really nice and sturdy and we fixed this little gem that had a big chunk missing here. So that's looking really nice and pops. And then our feet, which were a really big job. Um, they've all been polished and they're really smooth and lovely. And you would never know they were missing before. So yeah, it turned out really good. Other than that, we got the side here that was not too bad for veneer repair, but this side here was really bad. And there was a big hole here. It just kind of faded into the finish for the old crank for the Victrola. 
And then this piece they wanted to keep, so we just shine this up and put it back on. There was a lot of repairs down here. You can still see the faint triangles of veneer inserts that I've got in here. And uh, the back was in pretty great shape. Just needed a cleanup and a refinish, just like everything. And uh, yes, yeah, so we were finished this in a brown mahogany by, Maho by Gowdy and it's turned out really nice. You can see the beautiful veneers kind of popping through with their swirls and burls and beautiful things that they've got going on. In the tops we did veneer repairs. You can kind of see there's a big strip here and a little bit of a triangle going here. So we just kind of faded those out. These ones you can see a little bit more because they're on the lighter part, but they don't stick out. They're uh, blending quite nicely with everything. And there were veneer repairs too on the doors. There was a piece here and the whole bottom was chipped out. Same with this one. You can just see a little bit of what was going on. So I'm really happy with the results. And it was a big one. Thanks for joining me on this one. And I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a slow process, but I appreciate anyone who uh, comes with me on the journey. So thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other videos just like this one.